Hello, everybody. This is Jake Stenzano, host of Jake and Gino Podcast. Here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, the chef, the father of six, the best-selling author, the G-Daddy, Gino Barbaro. Gino, how's it going? Jake, I haven't talked to you in a couple of days. I called you I tr- Saturday, dude. I, I, it's, it's a couple of days. I truly miss <laughs> you. I need my daily fix of Jake. I say that a day without sunshine is like a day without Jake. Man. You need Jake in your life every Damn, single start, day. I'm start crying, dude. I'm doing better now, Jake. How are you doing, brother? Always making it happen, big man. Today's guest left college just a semester shy of graduation. Oh, man, he was so close. Uh, he, he did that to chase his dream of entrepreneurship. This is going to be interesting. We got, some, we got some things to talk about already. Uh, which started off leading to financial struggles, eventually led to hard-earned success. He's now built multiple seven-figure businesses and currently runs Millionaire University, teaching others how to graduate rich by creating their financial freedom. So so we're dropping out and now we're creating colleges. We got a lot to unpack here. So without further ado, Justin Williams, welcome to the show. How's it going, guys? Dang, I'm, I'm jealous. I want a Jake and Gino in my life. It's not fair. Well, you can only have one. You have a Jake or a Gino in your life. You can't get both of us. <laughs> okay, all right, all right I'll know. decide. Well, after the interview, I'll pick which one I want. You're definitely gonna take Gino. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. So, about that. so dude, I gotta bust your balls a little bit here. So you, you, you dropped out of college to to figure it out on the streets to teach other people like that's a little hypocritical no your professor must be pissed a little bit something like that not only that i think my football coach well he actually wasn't pissed because i gave up my football scholarship and i was injured so i it allowed for another scholarship so he was probably fine um but no i was literally getting paid to go to college and once i hurt my shoulder playing football come on this and, was before nil deals you weren't really yeah, getting yeah, paid yeah, right yeah. well no okay i wasn't getting paid a lot but i wasn't <laughs> I wasn't paying to go to college. I was getting yeah. paid something, right? Um, no, if there were NIL deals, I probably would have stayed, but I probably wouldn't have been making a whole lot anyway. But um, yeah, I just, I couldn't, it wasn't for me. Everyone said go to college because that's how, what you got to do to be successful in life. And I knew I wanted to own a business. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew I wanted to create wealth, but I knew I, I was going to these classes and learning about rocks. And while now being, you know, 43, I can sit down and watch a, a show on Netflix about rocks and the planet. And it's very interesting to me at that time. I just wanted to learn how to make money and take care of my uh, soon to be future family. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I just, I just, um, in my experience, and, I, and I've said this a lot before, I, I got very little value out of, you know, college and, and high school and these things. And, uh, I, I've got tremendous value from others though. And, and others teaching, it just has not come in the form of, you know, traditional school, uh, I, you know, just even, even from, you know, we're, we're sort of, uh, also living our values. Gino has six kids, all homeschooled. I have three kids. They're all homeschooled. And I, I would, uh, I would have to guess that our curriculums, uh, are, are pretty far away from what, uh, what they're learning in the, uh, the elementary schools and, and, and up. So it's just, Jake, yeah. all I would say though is, I advocate college for a lot of people. Both of my older children went to college. I don't know they if both, I do. They both did well. <laughs> well, listen, they went to yeah. a college and they already were strong in their values. They were strong in their faith. So they weren't swayed easily. They understood simple logic. They, what are you they talking about make- swayed? Was this like some kind of like, are you about to red pill this guy or what? What are you talking about? You know? <laughs> they, they, were, they were strong in their foundation and they went there to learn. They went there to get into some type of rhythm. My son went for accounting and finance to learn about statement of cash flows and balance sheets and income statements and debits and credits. So there is value yeah. if you can teach your kids but if you're just going for a sociology degree and get $150,000 in student debt and then walk out and be like Justin, not even have a degree, which almost <laughs> what's the study of what's the study of rocks? What do they call that? Geology? Um, no, it's not. No, what is study of rocks? I forget. Is that that was your major though, dude? No, my major was PE. <laughs> Dude, that was mine. <laughs> nice. I just, I, I was going to major in business and I went and talked to a counselor. I didn't even know I could talk to a counselor. My cousin was going to talk to a counselor. I was like, I should go talk to a counselor. And I was telling them I wanted to major in business. And they're like, well, you have a football scholarship. And I'm like, how? They're like, that's going to take like 70 hours a week. And you can't work on the side. You can't date. You can't have fun, basically. And I'm like, that's lame. What's an easier major? <laughs> so PE to me was an easier Did you do major, any so of like- the, um, did you do any of like the, uh, I forget what it's called, but where you go out to the schools and you actually start like, you know, doing teaching and stuff. 
Yes, and that's when I knew I did not want to be a PE dude, teacher. That's when I stopped doing the same thing too. I'm like, this is glorified fucking babysitting. I can't I do like, this shit. This These kids sucks. don't. There was kids wearing like Marilyn Manson jerseys on the bleachers. I'm like, we're going to play flag it was football. Insane. What are you doing? Insane. I was like, I hate this, and I also you get paid nothing. I realized like how much you get paid, and I'm like, I can't do this. I'm like, I'm not. And then I'm going and take, taking this class about rocks that has nothing to do about. PE or anything. I was like, this is insane. I have all these people in my life telling me, you got to go to college from like the time I was little. You got to go to college. Bro, bro, I was working at Radio Shack making commission more than the gym teachers were making while part time while I was in. And that's and that's why I was like, I had this come to Jesus with my dad one night. I was driving home from my parents' house and he's like, just stop. You don't have to do it. Just but he, I finished, though. But I didn't get a phys ed degree. I got like a general whatever. They gave me the credits for having the whatever. I don't know. Yeah. On the weekends, I would go to like trade shows and get people to go to timeshare presentation. And and, I, and then and then I started selling satellite dish. And I was making 50 to 100 bucks an hour doing that. And I was going to, now I was had to like finish college. And here's the kicker. The semester I had left was student teaching. And I was like, yes. there is no That's way. That's what it's called, student teaching. That's why There's I remember. No way. That was, dude, that shit was crazy. No. Because I started, I, mean, I did a couple like practice ones. Yeah, I, I was think like, I, I am not thing. going to do this for six months. And I had biology. I didn't want to take biology either. I was like, I'm not going to do this for six months to then do it for the rest of my life and get paid peanuts and hate it. And I'm neither am I going to do it for six more months so that I can like tell my mom and dad, hey, I did it. Good job. Yay. I got my piece of paper. Like, I was like, no, like, I, I'm too stubborn. I was like, I. Dude, don't let's be honest. This. You can show up, show up at 7 30, work till 3 30. And then coach three or four sports till like eight o'clock at night, and 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 make minimum wage. That doesn't sound good to you. Totally. I know. I, oh my I, god, I, I feel so bad football. for your teacher out there. I'm not hating on you. Bless the teachers. We need people teaching people. <laughs> but like, it just doesn't seem like uh, the values there. Yeah. Well, in my mind too, I was like, oh, I know a principal that makes like okay money. I could do that, but it still is like peanuts compared to what. And then you got to go through all. Dude, this there's time no way and... you're going from the gym teacher to the principal. Like maybe in 20 or 30 years, they're, they're, exactly. They're gonna, they're, they're not, exactly. They're going to kick you in the knee all the way trying to do that shit. Exactly. But but to going back to what you guys were saying earlier, I am a huge proponent of education education people think i'm against education i'm actually more for education than 99.9 percent .9 of the world i mean people go to college and then they think they're done and back to your point gino like i got a, an 18 year old right now and he actually just got married that's a whole nother story so I, we have two 18 year olds living with us uh, we thought he was going to go off on like this i know you, you heard you mention your daughter does mission and work he was gonna go off on a mission instead ends up getting married and, and they're probably out there you can probably hear me Love them to death. They're adorable. They're amazing. But <laughs> but I tell you what, I am I almost every day I regret not encouraging him to go to college because if he was at college, he could get babysat. Instead, I have to babysit. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, but what kind of babysitting is he getting, right? Is it Karl Marx babysitting I'm, or is it like at home? You might be better off. So right? and I, I'm joking, he's amazing. I'm it's not. just it's it's hard. Like not everyone is wired the same. And to me, like, that's why we created Millionaire Universe. Like, I still believe that he will at some point create a successful business because he's working right now. And I could tell it's wearing him down. He's like, I'm making like hardly anything. This sucks. I see like what my parents have. And he knows pretty, and he has like a year to live with us. And then it's like, okay, good luck, man. <laughs> Go get it figured out. So I'm pretty sure he's going to get into sales here. And then eventually he'll figure out a business. But anyway, it's, it's interesting. I'm not against college. Just, I just think it could be way better. Like, <laughs> it's a great experience for some people, but it could be 10 times better. Anyway, what I'm hearing is this is going to be called the Justin and Jake show because Gino just got vetoed out. So you, I think Jake is like a couple notches above Gino right now. So I got to step up my game here, Jake. I just got to start asking some <laughs> Dude, great you questions. got the nice shirt on, baby. Step up. <laughs> you know, Justin, you get into real estate and into flipping homes. And is that the entrepreneurial dream? Was that what you were looking for to create wealth? You know, I mean, growing up, I, I always wanted to start my own business. And I look back in this moment, I actually had this morning, I was actually having like a like almost like a teary eyed, you know, moment because I've always said like my parents, like, they were never successful, like in business or anything like that. But man, they were constantly doing like not what we call side hustles today. My mom probably had like 20 different little businesses, they were always doing MLMs. Um, and so I do think in a way, like number one, as a child, my, my dad graduated in 1980, the same year I was born in construction management. And if you know anything about that time, like interest rates were like 18% and it was insane. And he like could not get a job. So they say you don't remember things, but when you were like two, three, four, 
I remember my prayer every day was that my dad wouldn't get laid off from work that day because mm-hmm. it happened on a regular basis and we usually couldn't pay our rent. And this was like, what area of the like country do you live bedroom. in? Uh, well, right, and right now, I mean, I live in. No, no, when uh, you're a kid, when you're a kid. Oh, I, I was born in Idaho and then my parents lived in different parts. My dad, like he went, we went to Bakersfield at one point so he could work on an oil derrick. Like he was just taking whatever jobs he could get. Um, but we lived, I forget where it was, but we lived in this house that didn't have air conditioning or heating in an area that was freezing cold. And it, it was just, it was brutal. My mom one day went to the landlords who lived across the street who had like this huge house. And she was like, here's like the, it, it was, our rent was like $300 or something like that. And she's like, here's 200. Like, it's all I can do. And she's like, well, you guys are gonna have to move out, you know? And, and I just like, wanted to have a different life than that. But my, my parents also, they were constantly trying to make money because probably my dad struggled with, with getting a job and they were doing all these like MLMs and they never like succeeded at any of them. So I think I had a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth, but also being around some of those people. And I do remember like I read rich dad, poor dad when I was an 18 year old, uh, in, in high school, like in my senior year, because someone gave that book to uh, my parents to read. And so I had these things in my that brain. That was an MLM remember. sensation from what I, I heard from somebody. Like it got kicked around some MLM and that's where it like caught fire. Oh, that's a very, that's really interesting. But that's probably why it was in your house. Yeah. But I remember getting married and I talked to my wife about like, oh yeah, we're going to uh, own, like we're going to buy rental properties. I was ditching college classes to go get my real estate license. I didn't know anything. I didn't know there were guys like you guys. <laughs> or people that you can go to like seminars and learn how people would teach you how to make millions of dollars. I had no clue that that even existed, which is hilarious. Like looking back, but I, I knew I read this book called rich. I just knew in my mind that you could buy rental properties and buy houses. And the goal was to have more money coming in than coming out the whole, um, you know, uh, financial freedom as you call it. And my wife was just blown away by this as if we were dating and I would talk about this. I think that's how I got her to marry me is she's like, this guy, like, he's going to make it happen. I'm like, yeah, you know, let's go. And so <laughs> I always had it in my head that, yeah, like you become financially free, you buy real estate and, or create a business and like, why not? But little did I know what I didn't know. And once I started the business, we ended up $120,000 of debt and a failed partnership and ended up moving to Bakersfield ourselves and living in what we call the bachelor pad and practically homeless. And anyway, it was fun times. But when you started, when you started the flipping and you get into the flipping, how did the business start? Because you said you were doing 100 homes a year at one point. How did you scale up to that from practically nothing to getting up to 100 homes? Totally, yeah. So we started off, we were doing a satellite dish and I was kind of over that. And I had a friend that was in real estate and I called him up. I'm like, what, you know, tell me about this thing. He's like, oh, I'm going to this seminar this uh, next weekend in Atlanta, Georgia by this guy that teaches this thing called short sales. I had no idea what short sales were, but I got on like a 90 minute call and then we signed up for the seminar and we were like, are you kidding me? This guy's going to teach us all this stuff. And I went to the seminar. I understood like 5% of what was being taught, but I was all in. We paid the guy like $12,000 to to join his, his program today. That would be, you know, like 30,000 or whatever. And mm-hmm. then, you know, I mean, the whoever is the best student was going to win a car. So I was like, well, $12,000 to win a $30,000 car. Let's do this. And uh, long story short, we actually won the car, but we, we never got it. So that's a, that's a Whoa. Fun, fun story. <laughs> that doesn't feel good. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's a crock of shit. I'd come yeah. back. I'd go get him now. We, we kind of try, but also, you know, it's like how much energy are you going to put into a, yeah. a thing? It still right? pisses so, me off. So Justin, let me ask you though, what's the difference between somebody who knows nothing? You said, you know, 5% but you take massive action and you become successful versus I'm sure you've met a lot of people in your community, in your university that come in that are really intelligent, really educated, have the financial capability, but yet struggle and don't succeed. What is the difference? So, I mean, kind of going back to the question you asked me, how do we go from like zero to a hundred essentially? So we got into, we did like got into short sales, took us eight months to do our first deal. And I actually listened to the last podcast that that you guys just published and kind of like a similar thing you were talking about. It took so much time, energy, effort, knowledge, things to learn, tons of insane action to do one deal in eight months. But then- We were were 18 months, yeah. Yeah, right? I mean, you guys are doing big deals, but like to do, well, it was like one house, right? Make 17 grand, like it, so nothing for 18, that's like, insane faith, right? You got to believe, but I saw other people doing it. I'm like, 
other people are doing it. I know this guy's pretty smart, but that guy, he's dumb as wrong. And he's like, I know I'm, I know I'm smarter than that guy. And <laughs> he's doing it. So I think we can do it and just take an insane action. But it took eight months to get that first deal. And then the next like month, like two months to do the second one. And then next month we did one. And then we did two. You know, and it's like, okay, we're starting to build some momentum here. Um, and, and then eventually that got to where, um, short sales started to change and we were about to do our first flip. And I was so scared. This was like two years later. I was so scared to flip this house because it was actual real money. We weren't just wholesaling. Right. And I know your listeners understand wholesaling, so I won't try to explain, but it, the risk was minimized through the wholesaling. Right. So this was actually a deal that we were doing. It only cost like 70 grand, like looking back is nothing. Right. But I was using one of my dad's, like guy that worked with my dad, his money. This guy was trusting me. And I was so scared to lose his money. You should have been. I, I know, right? But I was so scared that it paralyzed me and caused me not to go forward and do um, a bunch a bunch more deals. So what happened was I because you would have had to use more. his you would have had to use more of his money or like what's what's the psychology behind that? What do you what I do you think, mean? I think I mean it's the whole the whole yeah the fear of losing money the whole like you know limbic system my amygdala like like I was I was feel like I was getting attacked by a bear. When it wasn't really a bear, it was just, <laughs> I it was It feels afraid. better when you're using your own money though, right? For me personally, like I'd rather go out and do 100%. a deal with my own money. 100%. Than, I didn't have than, enough yeah. money to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so you, no, using, no, but using, you make a money on a few deals. You can open yourself up to doing your own is like, I think where my mind Which is going. what eventually happened. Yeah. 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 So, but what was interesting is then I heard about this thing called, you know, real, uh, rental properties, which I knew about rental properties. My friends was trying to accumulate these rental properties. I'm like, oh yeah, rich dad, poor dad, the rental properties. I always wanted to do this. So once I started looking at rental properties and figuring out the criteria for those, I was able to buy more houses because I wasn't afraid of losing the money because the numbers made sense to me. So we bought 12 properties over a three month period, which was the most deals we'd ever done in that short a period of time. But then we were all out of our money. We had a baby on the way. I didn't have like, I didn't know a lot of private money lenders at the time. And we were like, how the heck are we gonna pay our bills? I'm like, this sucks, we bought 12 houses. They're each cash flowing a couple hundred dollars a month, but with all the expenses we have, like crap. So kicking and screaming, because I wanted to get like a hundred for these properties. Um, we sold one of those and then we, you know, we, we ended up selling three of them because they weren't rented out yet. And we made as much money as we needed to pay for our bills for a year. And that was the best feeling ever. I'm like, wait It's real. It's yeah, real, I'm, honey, no, it's, it's real. Yep. <laughs> so in, a, in like a, within a month, we made enough money more money than we needed for a year. And it kind of like hit us. I'm like, what if we could like do this again and again and again? And so that's kind of, we just kept buying these. And oh, so in my, my mind, what happened was, I was like the worst case scenario is, as to where before I was afraid of losing the money. I'm like the worst case scenario, we now have these rental properties that we initially wanted anyway. So psychologically getting rid of that. If you can't sell them, you got if rentals. If you can't sell them, then we got a rental properties. And that's what I really wanted anyway. So it's like, it's a win-win. So we just kept going with that, kind of found some areas that were really good for us. And then eventually showed like the deals that we were doing to uh, this guy. And that, by then I was understanding more about returns and velocity of money and showed this guy, it's like, hey, we're making like 20% on these houses. We're turning them three to four months. Um, on average, we're making 50 to 60% on the total cash invested. And this guy had deep pockets. He understood real estate and he's like, I'll take half of that, you know, no problem. So he became our JV partner. So then, cause now we had the area, we had the crews and Where then was we the started area? to develop these systems. So I'm in California. We were buying a lot of these in like the high desert of California, um, Hesperia area, kind of Coachella Valley, um, some in uh, San Bernardino County, some in like Riverside County area. But yeah, we were buying a lot of like trustee cells at the time. And I, I mean, I feel like I was the first one who kind of discovered buying houses out in like Yucca Valley at the trustee cells. Like I, I would see these houses like do, selling for like 34 grand, two bedroom house that was worth 70 You're like, 000. I don't give a shit. Just give it to me. I don't even see it. Just give totally. it to me. I, I, I had never been to the area. I bought, I probably bought 10 houses in that area before I ever it's went. Probably because it's called Yucca Valley. Who wants to go to Yucca hey, Valley, man. right? It's hey. got some, you know, some kind of something they, wrong they with it. They sold. I mean, it worked, yeah. right? I was like 30 grand. And I knew, once again, my rental, the rental background, I knew I could rent it out for 800, 900 bucks. 
didn't need more than five grand into it. That's easy math, right? Yeah. It's easy math. I'm like, I can't, I, like, I don't see how I can lose here. The cash flow ain't yucca, that's for sure. So, um, Justin, as you're expanding, one of my mantras that I truly believe in my soul and in my fiber and in my being is people with financial intelligence can change the world for the better. And your mission with Millionaire University, it seems as if you're a proponent of that statement and of those sentiments. What made you want to create Millionaire University? So it was a few years ago as our kids were you know, teenagers, they still are teenagers, but approaching that like college age, if you will, about to finish high school. And I was just, I was constantly complaining about college because I struck, I wanted my kids to go have that college experience. I wanted them to learn. I wanted them to have that accountability, but I was just thinking about like college, like you, you go to classes, you don't choose your classes per se. I mean, you kind of do, but you don't, it's like, here's the classes that you have to go to. You have all these classes you don't really want to go to. You have teachers you may not necessarily want giving you assignments that may or may not be beneficial. Sure. It's good to learn work ethic. It's good to learn habits. But for me, do, I was do already you learn work ethic that. in college. <laughs> it, so, look, sometimes it's hard for me to get my kids to take out the trash. Yeah. So if I can have if, if the teachers are like, so it depends on what level of Just development get a taser. you are, right? <laughs> Seriously, man, I've, I've talked about the shot callers and yeah. I always get in trouble if I my kids and my wife and I bring that up. But, um, <laughs> but that's the thing, like. It depends. Like I, to me, it's like, if you're not going to be self-motivated, then you're flipping hamburgers and you're better off going to college. That's what I tell my son. I'm like, Hey, you can flip burgers for a year, you know, per se he's doing, working at Target and doing some other things. I'm okay if you're doing this for a year, but if you don't figure out a business or get a sales job, like, dude, I mean, he's, he's an adult, but it's like, <laughs> still, I'm like, you either got to go to college or you got to like figure out one of these things out. Cause there's three levels. It's like, you're either flipping the burgers or you're figuring out the higher income or you're going to college, which is like in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, as far as, as far as money goes, right? Mm -hmm. What's target paying? He gets paid 1850 an hour. And then <laughs> the thing that drives him crazy is sometimes he'll sell like protection plans and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. the commission is so small. It's like a dollar, you know? So, so this could like make it's like not, it's not motivating 20 bucks enough, an hour. Right? No, and that's in California. So California yeah. gets paid more and he's living with us. So he's able to take advantage of not paying the rent, but making more money in California, but still not. It's not. What, so what does he need in California to get by? Is it, he needs to be like low to mid twenties with a significant other doing the same thing, probably to be able to afford rent and things like that. Right. Yeah. You said low to mid twenties. I'm sorry. Yeah. What, yeah so if, if him and his, him and his wife are making low to mid twenties, they could probably put enough together to get out on their own. Right. Not, but not at, eight, at 18 Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Like barely. I mean, yeah. but they, they want to live in Southern California. They want to buy a house. I'm like, it doesn't like, so what we'll do at Runtown is we'll sit down with them. Cause I feel like I'm giving a pep talk like every day. Like, okay, come on. You gotta do this. You gotta do this. You gotta do this. Don't get me wrong. He's a great kid, hard worker, go, heart of gold. Right. But the reality is like, sometimes they just don't know the reality. So I'm like, what are, what are your goals? I'm not going to tell you my goals for you. What are your goals? And then just have them break down the math. And all of a sudden they're like, oh shoot. So unlike me, like I'm a, extrovert i talk to people like i was doing cells he does he doesn't like to talk to people on the phone but all of a sudden he's getting more open to it because just like in rich dad poor dad he had to go work and he's like this sucks <laughs> so i'm like hey go work do what you got to do and i think in his mind he's like oh man this sucks maybe i will be more open to doing cells and work harder and starting this business and, and so does does out. the door lock at the end of the uh before he turns 19 at the house or how's that go no, I mean, he actually turns 19 uh, next week. <laughs> so, so he's no. still there. So how long has he got before dad puts we, him on the street? We essentially told them, and it's kind of up to them too. I mean, it's not like they're getting put on the street like right away. The, the thing is, as long as what I tell them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's coming. Can you hear they, that, Johnny? It's coming. <laughs> I mean, they, they, think, they think they're going to be here. Well, they think within a couple months they can move on. I'm like, I know it's not going to be able to happen. Uh, so they want months. to at least. They, yeah, they want to. I mean, I try to nag them enough to sure. where they want to. And I, that, that was kind of like, that was a little weak of a they response. They want to. I just don't know if they <laughs> I fully, hope they want to. I don't want them here anymore. They fully realize. <laughs> no, it's fun. I mean, it's fun having them around. We just know. My my rule for them is essentially minimum. And I upped it last on Sunday to 50. But at minimum, 40 hours a week of production. That means you're either working, mm -hmm. you're going, taking college classes, 
you're studying for business, you're applying business. But the problem is sometimes like when he's trying to work towards that business, he gets distracted. So I'm like, it's gotta be focused. I gotta know what you're doing. Is and there then rent? Is there rent at home? Here. Um, there, there's not rent. We're, our goal is to help them. Uh, this is, I don't want to get too distracted in your podcast, but they worked really hard. They saved up for a car and they had the car for three weeks and two days ago, right out here in front of our house, right up. Well, PCH is just right out here. We hear this loud. Boom! <laughs> like What's PCH? I don't crash. know PCH. Pacific Coast Highway. Okay. So the ocean is just right here. We live, we just live. But so people are always driving by, looking at the beach. Their car was parked down front on the street because we're like, hey. That's like the road Orange County down to like San Diego, right? That Yeah, that, yeah we're yeah, in San Diego. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, we just hear this loud bang. And I was like, what the heck was that? And Jay, his, his wife, we were talking to her and him. And it's like, that was a car accident. So I run out there. Like ho I'm hoping I don't find anyone dead, right? And this this person was texting. She got she luckily she everyone was okay, but she hit their car and it was up on this wall. <sighs> so their car that they finally caught is now totaled. <laughs> so anyway, that's a side. Uh, but, but Justin, so you 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 don't like college for yourself. You don't like this. How did you structure Millionaire University? How do people get onto Millionaire University and start using the these? So the so the vision of Millionaire University, and I'm a big fan of of take action, fell forward fast, make it happen. So Millionaire University is over time going to evolve to become what we want it to be. And this very moment, it's not 100% what we want it to be. But the whole idea is take everything I like about college, everything I don't like um, about college and, and get rid of it, right? The whole idea, graduate rich, not broke. College, you go to you go to school and you learn like theory and you do busy work. I want to learn on the job. I want to, it's from, from day one, the concept would be someday to have, maybe it's young people like that would go to college. They come to this campus and it's like, okay, hey, what do you want to do? I want to do this thing. Okay, hey, let's go, let's get to work. And then you do have, you have classes like how to build a website, how to run Facebook ads, all this stuff. But it's like, what business do you want to do? What's the thing that you're passionate about? Let's actually have work you towards working, value creation. Work yeah. towards that. Yes. The yeah. motivation is so much stronger. The work I was doing, like I was just like, hey, what's the best loophole I can find here to give the teacher what they want so I can get my letter so I can get my paper. You're, you're talking like a pre-incubator essentially. <laughs> kind of something like that, but a yeah. little more, um, I mean, I, I don't even, I've never been, I understand incubators yeah. to a degree. But something that like my 18 year old son could fit into, like that yeah. would be my dream. I guess if I snapped my fingers today and had something that was kind of like a kind of structured, but also allowed them to make money and fail and kind of in like a safe space, like I would mm -hmm. love, I would be all over that. It's like, let's go right now. So before, before we go to the short answers, where can people get more information on how to join Millionaire University? Maybe if they want to start, you know, putting a, a, a course on there or they want to give you any kind of ideas, where can they reach out and get more information? Yeah, so Millionaire University, just go to millionaireuniversity.com and then we have our podcast, Millionaire University. We are actually just, so, so basically we've been doing Millionaire University for a year and a half. The idea first was just do the podcast, grow an audience. I mean, I'm going to be honest, we have a great life. Like we just got done traveling the world for nine months with our family. Uh, we live right next to the ocean. Just right now, my wife and I were talking. We want to go get the uh, hydrofoils, which is like surfing, like above the water. This is it's too motors. easy on Jay. This is what's going yeah. <laughs> on. It's too fucking cushy, man. No, oh, trust me, I know. That's why we're trying to make it harder for them. <laughs> but like, I don't want to give up my lifestyle. So we almost didn't do Millionaire University for two years. We contemplated it, and we almost weren't going to do it because it's like we don't need to make money more. We busted our butt for you know all this time. Why? But then I wasn't feeling as fulfilled and I wanted to do more, all that stuff, right? So we're like, let's just do it in our way. Like, it's our game to play, our rules. So we started with the, the podcast and just putting like a certain amount of time. Now we've grown an audience. We have sponsors and we have what I call, you know, a flywheel or like a, a money making machine, if you will. Like that every time we do podcasts, like for every dollar we spend on the podcast, we make a dollar fifty back. So we're up to like 800000 listens per month. And the more I spend to grow, the more money we make. So that's kind of cool. Um, but we just started our, we're, we're currently creating our first program. It's called build my money machine. So that literally we're going to launch that in a week to where people can get access to that. It's going to be super cheap. Like we're not going to make, I mean, hopefully we'll eventually make money from it, but the idea is just to bring a bunch of people in 
have them understand kind of the, the foundational pieces. And then next year we'll start more the niche, the niche focuses and have a bunch of different programs people can join. So that's, so millionaireuniversity.com and then build my money machine.com as well as the first course we're going to put together. So Jake, b before we go to the short answers, I'd love to collaborate with you because uh, my family's creating something called Barbaro 360. And it's very interesting because my two of my daughters are massage therapists. My son is 22 years old. He's actually an accredited investor. Yes, his net worth is over his net worth is over a million dollars. He's got nine. Sounds he's sexist got, to me, Gino. You're leaving the girls out too much. Well, well you know what? The <laughs> I had to be girl, an asshole. I'm sorry. Actually, carry on. <laughs> Sophia's getting her first draw today. She's 18 years old. She's getting her first draw. So anyway, but but what I'm saying, the point is, he be, he's be, he actually went to Dave Ramsey, became a financial coach. I would love to be able to collaborate with you and have our family on your platform because I'm writing a book called Happy Money, Happy Family, Happy Legacy. My wife is this high performance coach. So we have all of the, I guess, foundational work that we could love to bring onto a platform like that and amplify the message and just show really how money and family and legacy really can be all intertwined and how they should all be intertwined because growing a family is like growing a business. They both need to be tended to. They both need mission statements. They both need culture and core values and they need nurturing. Your children don't know what the hell to do. You have to teach your children. And it's just like business. You're not born a business person. You've got to buy the $30,000 house in Yucca and make the mistake. So when this podcast is over, me and you're going to have a conversation. Jake, anyway, take it over, brother. All right. Well, listen, let's take a quick time out to hear from our sponsor. Now, we have had a great run in multifamily, going from zero units to over 250 million in assets. That's over 2,000 apartment deals that we've been able to purchase through our framework, Buy Right, Manage Right, and Finance Right. Now, Jake and I, we created the Jake and Gino community back in 2015. We launched our first book, Build Our Profits. And since then, our students have closed over 60,000 units. That's over $4 billion in assets they've been able to close over the last six years. And that's why this community has been so successful. We call it results-based education, and we pour back into the community everything that we've learned on our journey from zero to 2,000 units, and all our systems and scale that we use on our very own property management and investing company. Jake, I love that. It's not just education, it's implementation. So what I want you to do, click on that link down below, apply to work with our team, see how we can help you on your journey multifamily. All right, we are back. So you mentioned earlier the flipping business uh, took a lot to scale, a lot of systems. Um, for folks out there getting started in the real estate business, give some some real actionable tips on scale and, and, and putting systems in place. Because I think so many people get hung up where they're doing everything, wearing all the hats, and then they never scale because they can't get out of that rut. So what were some things that you did uh, you know, in your experience that, that got you to that next level? Yeah, hundred percent. I would say, I mean, there, there's lots of different ways to, to leverage and create scale, right? Um, one of the big ones is, so it's basically people, money, systems and processes. Um, and then people, like systems and culture. That's what we always say. Technology, people, yeah. platform, stuff like that, right? So the, the concept, if you want to make seven figures or make a bunch of money to live a great life, like essentially all you, what you got to do is you got to learn from great guys like Jake and Gino. Um, I mean, it's, it's the information is out there. So to me, I just blows my mind. You literally can go listen to people in today's day and age that will tell you how to become rich. But how many people don't? But think do it? about think about twenty years ago though. You could get it's so much easier. I think is the point. You could get a book twenty years ago, and it may or so may not much be easier. good. But dude, it's like so much easier. It's so much easier. So first of all, you got to believe it's possible. You got some mindset stuff, all that stuff, right? And then you got to take action because action leads to information. So you we take action based on a hypothesis we have, and you don't have to have this. Like, don't go try to start this big, insane new. I, people come to me with this new idea that. No one's ever done or ever heard of. And I'm like, yeah, good luck if that's your goal. But like, you've never even started a basic business. Like, go detail cars. Like, go, like, I mean, so what are you passionate about? What do you like doing? Figure that out. What do you know something about? What is someone else that is doing something like that? Go look at what, what they're do people doing. need. Yeah. This is, the, this is the problem with, and I, there was a kid, they were, they were cleaning the windows at the house the other day. And one of the kids just started asking questions and, and things. He wants to start a business and this and the other thing. And he wants to start a brand. And I'm like, what, 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 what are you doing that people need? All right. Because yeah. especially when the economy goes down, Gino and I were talking about this earlier today. 
you have to be providing a service that other people need or at least really want. And then you got to be good at it. So stop thinking about yourself. There's so many selfish pricks out there that get into business because they think they got it. You have to fulfill a need for the marketplace. That is the first step that so many people miss on. But when you start taking action, that leads to information. And then you understand what is this taking? So the goal is yeah. you take action on something. And let's say that you get to the point where you're making a hundred bucks an hour. You now can, can scale that because you can hire the labor out for 20, $30 an hour. And then you just got to get good at the marketing and, and things like that. So for me, I always tell people, whatever it is that you're doing, like if you have a business right now, make a list of all the things you're doing. How long does it take? What, like all that stuff. And you want to pick the items that take most of your time. Cause there's really only a few things that take probably 50, 60% of your time. The things that take most of your time and are the easiest to do. And you outsource that first and then you buy back your time and then you can continue for, from that point. Right? So that's like a big part of scaling. Another one is, is and don't money, be too cheap to do it, know. right? Because a lot of people like are, are you know tight fisted and they won't spend the money, and that's what's preventing the growth. Yeah, for there, there's a lot in psychology that says that we have a lot harder time letting go of what we currently have than going after what we don't have. So the way I look at it in my mind is all the wealth in the world, all the good things in the world, it's all it's all mine. It's all yours. It's all yours, Jake's and Gina's. It's it's all of ours. But what kind of what systems or processes have I set up in my business or my life to have some of that flow my way, right? So I can have fun with my family, but so I can also continue to grow my businesses and give back to more people. I always say, um, at the end of the day, my goal is to help people make money and have fun. If I'm doing those three things and have fun includes like getting along with my spouse, but it also includes going to Disneyland and going on trips when I want, right? Um, but if you're not making money, you can't do some of those things. If you're not making money, it's harder to help people. The more money you make, the more people you can help. It all bleeds together. So I love that. Well, this 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 segues well then. So a, a book or a podcast recommendation, anything that's added value to your life in the last year uh, so that you want to share with the folks. Oh man, so many. I mean, I was listening to your guys' podcast today. I thought that was it was great. I listened to the section two, the section, uh, not section two, <laughs> section eight. <laughs> One of the most recent ones that you guys published. Um, I was just trying to get a fill. Uh, for, you guys are grilling me a lot more than you were grilling him, Gino. Man, I wasn't I wasn't ready for this. Um, what was it? A Gino only podcast? Is that why? It was a Gino yeah, only podcast. Yeah. So they did you cruise on Section Eight? <laughs> See, he he got that one. Then he didn't he didn't he didn't realize that the dogs are going to be unleashed today. That's what happened. <laughs> See, hold on but a second, yeah. Justin. Before you before you progress, Jake, I was in I was interviewing this gentleman, and he was in his basement with his Lamborghini and his Rolls Royce behind him. So how can you grill a guy like that? I mean, it's just one of those podcasts <laughs> where it's like. Brother, oh, dude, I, I would I would have definitely started busting his balls about having oh, a Lamborghini can, in the podcast. I think you can I, definitely bust his balls. There's no yeah. way that I would have been giving a shit about that. <laughs> so I was like, listening dude. to it and I was at the gym and then running this morning. So I didn't, I heard you talk about that, but I didn't, I didn't see uh, it. Ah, painful. Anyway. I would have been like, dude, what the fuck are you doing with, with a Lambo behind you right now? What, you, you got a nice like picture on the wall or something? You got to bring the Lambo in? Come on, dude. <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm a big believer in listening to stuff, but I would say everyone who's currently listening, you probably, there's a lot of people who don't listen to podcasts. I'm like, you morons, go listen to some podcasts, like learn some stuff. But people who are already listening, I'm a big proponent of just in time learning. And that's not because it has my name in it. It's basically like, go do something and then you'll realize what you don't know and then go learn that. So I really kind of don't want to give a bunch of books like to listen to. There's a ton of great books, but if you're listening right now, your biggest problem is and you're not succeeding is probably not that you don't get educated, right? If you're not listening, then that's your problem, but you're not listening. So it doesn't matter. It's probably you're not taking enough action, right? So go take action. There's plenty of action you can take that eliminates, that mitigates or eliminates your risk. Just like what I, psychologically, I just had to realize, oh, I have a plan B, right? And my whole, like, what is your plan B? Like, what are you doing to minimize or mitigate your risk? You don't lose money that you don't spend right? Like there's so many different things you can do. So many businesses you can start that don't cost any money. Go generate some money and then you'll have a little more that you can continue to grow that nest egg. So. Cool. All right. Last question before Gino takes us home. Um, one thing fun, exciting that you're doing right now in your life that you want to share with the folks. 
I mean, I mentioned the e-foiling. We went um, Saturday, and then we're going to go again Friday. My wife was like, I want to go now. I'm like, let's go, whatever you want. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's just really fun. I mentioned that we traveled for nine months. We went, traveled all over the world, um, pulled our kids out of school. They did online school. That was super fun. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm just... just and the uh, car was covered by insurance or no? I think so. I'm not a big, like, I'll get, like, the basic insurance, but I'm like, hey, the insurance is making money, right? So I don't want to spend... <laughs> so I'm like, I hope their car was covered, but if it's not... You don't it's know pretty, yet. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious because it was paid for. They, they just... We paid, we paid for part of it, they paid for part of it, and then they paid us off. So they literally paid, made the last payment yeah. the day before. What, what, what was the rate? And, um, oh, to, like to us? What were do you charging mean? like 5%? We Six. weren't because they were going to pay it off within weeks. Normally I would. No, trust me. Normally I would. But they were paying it off within weeks. But luckily it was only like a, like a $3,000 car. It was pretty ghetto fabulous. So. You know, I'm talking a lot of shit because my kids are younger and the oldest one's nine. But uh, I, I'm I'm calling this the tale of two softies today. All right, Gino's taking care of the kids, paying for the college. We we got Justin letting them live in the basement. <laughs> you guys got to toughen up and start cutting some shit off. That's all I'm Dude, saying, man. Trust so it's me, very I'm... it's very interesting. I'll I'll give you a great story of why I love what we're doing with our family. Uh, my son is driving a nice car. He has zero student debt. Uh, we help him pay for college. But what I love about it is he has the right mindset. He put $10,000 towards the car. I paid the remainder of the car. I don't want him to have any kind of car debt, any kind of personal debt. He's invested in his last two deals. Now, this new deal, Jake, that we have, he has no money. So what he said to me was, I will sell the car. Can you give me the money from the sale of the car? I will go out and get a personal line of credit to invest. So to me, he understands the value of money. He understands the sacrifice. He understands that, hey, the so car he is So he sold great. the car that you paid for, Gino? He did not. I, would, I, 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 I didn't let him. But, but Justin, <laughs> the fact that, the, the, the fact that That's what I'm saying, to... softies. No, 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 listen. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me follow this through. Let me I just follow had, this a word, through. had a bust him with you, Jake. Was... Yeah. No. I, I Pile on, Justin. I love it. <laughs> Listen, I have to make this. This is very important. This is a very important lesson. Most kids would not have that realization to say, let me take pain in the short term, not have a car, put money into an asset. Let me not get that money for the next 12 to 18 months until it refinances. He already understands that concept. That's what I'm trying to teach them. I'm trying to teach them really great habits, and I'm trying to teach them not that instant gratification. If you can teach that to your kids, those habits of needs versus wants, he, he, he wants the car, but does he really need it? No. If you can teach them that, I think you're laying the foundation. So when they do go out into the real world, they have those really great habits. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Jake is going to be the biggest pussy on the planet. <laughs> I, I don't care. These kids are going to be spoon fed. Yeah, I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that right now. Hey, he's you know, going to be the biggest wimp. Oh, do you? Oh, really? You, oh. I'm just here. Are the keys. I'm just. I can't wait, man. I'm going to be there ripping on him every day. And you know what? It's going to be great because that's why we're making money. We're making it to enjoy it with our family. We want happy money in our lives. That's why we're doing this. And we want our children to have a great mentality and a great mindset toward money. We want abundance. We don't want scarcity. That's the point I'm trying to drive home with my children, not to be afraid of money, but to use it as a tool. And that's all it is, Jake. I give you a hard time, Gino, but there are plenty of things that my son has sold that we paid for. And he's like, hey, I'm making money. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> We're making money. <laughs> it's got to be value creation. Gino, ex challenge accepted. Um, I will see where it goes. But Gina, you got to take us home now. Jake, I am going to give a nice little recap of Justin's life because it's very interesting. It parallels that of Jake Stenziano, a young stud going <laughs> into college, not really liking school. And then all of a sudden he gets hurt and he's learning about rocks and his, his, he sees his, his, his vision of being stuck in a school with these kids wearing Marilyn Manson shirts. <laughs> and they don't want to play dodgeball. What the fuck is wrong with you, kid? What's going on here? <laughs> I don't. I can't do this. I can't live on twenty bucks an hour. I need to find another gig. So I tell my parents, "Don't graduate college. One semester left. I'm going to go out and be an entrepreneur." And I don't know. For lack of a lack of a better strategy, I'm going to start fixing and flipping. And that's going to be really challenging. Buying in the Yucca Valley, but I make it happen. I make it work. I start up to flip at hundred homes, doing really well. Sell the education, the flipping business. And I'm getting bored right now. And I, I see to myself, you know, money is amazing, but it's not all about money. I want to really create an impact. I want to create a legacy. I want to really make 
a difference in life. I still want to go out and I really want to enjoy my money, but I want to do something that's going to perpetuate my legacy. And my legacy is wrapped around Millionaire University, where I want to start. I'm not where I want to be, but the vision is to start a campus where people can come and learn, whether it's learning how to create a website, whether it's learning how to do digital marketing, whether it's learning how to become an entrepreneur, whatever that looks like, that's what my legacy is. That's what my mission is. And I'm hoping to continue that legacy. Thanks, Justin. Thank you, guys. It was fun.